This is a 75 to 300 mm lens. Perhaps you're thinking about getting a lens like this for astrophotography, but still you're unsure about whether a lens like this is suitable for astrophotography at all. If so, join me for a new night of astrophotography as we capture an image of the Great Orion constellation by using this lens. This video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now, let's get started. As I already mentioned um, in the beginning, I will be photographing the Great Orion constellation. I will use a focal length of approximately 135 millimeters because my goal is not only to photograph the Orion Nebula, but also the Flame and the Horsehead Nebula. Earlier in Stellarium, I already set the framing to precisely include all of those three nebula. For sure, there will be other nebulas visible in this framing, but the focus is on those three nebula. But before we start, I would like to briefly introduce the equipment we'll be using for tonight's astrophotography session. As you already know, the 75 to 300 mm lens will be used as the optics. I will talk about the camera settings I've chosen for the day's image later on. The camera I'll be using is the Canon EOS 2000D. Since the Earth is rotating, I will need to track the night sky to avoid star trails in the image. We also need a mount. It is possible to use this lens for astrophotography without tracking, but in this case the exposure time needs to be significantly shorter to avoid noticeable star trails. If you are interested in more details, feel free to comment under this video and I can create a video on how to capture astro images without tracking. In this case I am using the HEQ5 Pro Gochi mount, which is quite oversized for this small lens, however I always use this mount for my significantly larger and heavier Newtonian telescope. To control the entire setup, I'll be using the Ace Air Pro, allowing me to manage all the equipment. And that's actually all the equipment being used tonight. I'll see you tomorrow on the computer, where I will show you the single frames as well as the final image. In my opinion, this is the best way to demonstrate whether a lens is indeed suitable for astrophotography. It has been clear for the last two nights. In total, I was able to achieve a total exposure time of around six hours. You can already see in single light frame, which was captured, with the equipment mentioned earlier. I used an ISO value of around 800 and single exposure time of around 1 minute. Normally I would have used at least 3 minutes, but since it was quite windy um, I had some issues even with a 1 minute exposure. Overall I captured over 2 nights. In one night I used an aperture of around um, f7.1 and in the other night an aperture of around 5.6. Um, the issue with this lens is extreme chromatic aberration and um, especially halos around the stars when using for example um, an aperture of around f4.0. I have provided an example here which you can see um, right here. Um, this image of the Orion Nebula um, was taken over a year ago and clearly you can see um, these extreme halos and the poor quality of the stars, especially um, the brighter ones. And that's why in the first night I used an aperture of around f7.1. The advantage, of course, is that less light reaches your sensor. This is a problem because the objects in astrophotography are mostly very, very dark. If less light reaches your sensor, you need much more exposure time to reveal details in galaxies or nebula, for example. However, if you use an aperture of around 5.6, um, the quality of your stars is way better. Even better for imaging quality would be an aperture of around um, f7.1, as I did. The image you can see here is the final image. In total, I had an exposure time of around two and a half hours at f7.1 and three and a half hours at f5.6. If you look closely at the stars here, you can see that there are no halos and the stars look very, very nice. Even in the second night at f5.6, the stars are still relatively okay. Unfortunately, you can't see many details, but this is mainly due to the aperture I used. Perhaps it will gather even more exposure time in the coming weeks. If you like the picture and the image, or it could help you with your decision, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you for watching and until next time.